we live in a period of transition. There are signs that we realize that going on in, on the business as usual trajectory is going to lead us to disaster. Uh, the city is very popular these days. Everybody discusses the, the city. National policymakers developing programs to discuss the future of the city. And I think it's important to get our best academics to join into that conversation. So that is why suddenly urban people, mayors, citizens, firms are regarded as the potential new agents of change. And this seminar is devoted to that very issue. Can urban people produce solutions for global problems? Right across the board, all the multilateral agencies, most all the development age agencies, almost all the academic analyses assume that the reason we have messed up African cities that just can't get their act together is that you just can't implement the unitary centrally planned, coordinated conception of urban governance that happened in Europe. Somehow there needs to be a municipality with an integrated network that everybody gets connected together and all other forms are just temporary and, and will eventually uh, 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 move aside. If you then look at cities and eco-space, well, cities overuse eco-space, they squat on other people's eco-space. Cities don't know how to share eco-space with others. So uh, everyone tries to take as much as possible into their own area. Urban policy sectors um, are often not really sectors of urban governance. And that's something we really need to be aware of. There has been a lot of sharing of good practice in areas like transport. That's urban transport is a classic area of innovation for cities. This is where sort of the learning from each other worked quite well because across the board globally, it's an area which tends to be really overseen by local governments. This symposium showed, for instance, the importance of also thinking about how the money flows on the world and how you can make that, make that money productive for, for public needs. Um, it was a plea for, for a new sort of coalition building between businesses, governments and NGO citizens. That's really difficult because it's also easy to see how Many people are insistent on trying to exploit, say, fossil uh, resources. That cannot be in the mix uh, in, the com in the coming decades. And that discussion about what sort of coalitions may work, um, I thought was really interesting. We do need some kind of rule of law at the global level. We do need a constitution at the global level within which the markets can function, within which states can um, exercise some degree of sovereignty and within which polycentric actors can function. Many cities are places of extreme inequality and enhanced inequality. So, and uh, in the uh, State of the World report, it says the world's richest 500 million people, which is 7% of the world's population, are currently responsible for half of the world's carbon dioxide emissions, probably all of us in this room. While the poorest 3 million are responsible for just 6%. Uh, and so, uh, unlike the thesis, I have a dream, I actually, I think many, many writers now have, have and are having uh, many nightmares. <laughs> okay, well, very encouraging to hear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let me give you a copy each, uh, in the hope that it will inspire you and inform you in, in you know, putting that city agenda together. I think it's a crucial move from the government that they got back into city. So, Hank, first copy for, for you and the same first copy for you, Ferdy. Thank you all for your uh, attention and one, one moment this is the... I mean, it, it is all about daring to be different than in the past and I'm trying to bring societal actors more in, in connection with policymakers in the hope that will improve our innovative capacities.